Our text for consideration today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. This is the text. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Location, location, location are said to be the three most important things in earthly real estate. Location is even more important as we journey toward heaven. Last week's Advent location was hope. Tonight's second Advent location is faith. Horatio Spafford penned the well-known Christian hymn, When Peace Like a River. Spafford was a successful Chicago businessman until the great Chicago fire of 1871 wiped out his real estate holdings. In 1873, after bouncing back, Spafford, his wife, and their four daughters were planning a vacation to Europe. When last-minute business threatened the delay of their departure, Spafford sent his wife and daughters on ahead of him. In the middle of the Atlantic, their ship, the Villa du Harva, was struck by another ship, the Lockern, and the Villa du Harva sank, and Spafford's four daughters drowned. Mrs. Spafford survived. Immediately, Horatio Spafford departed for, for Europe to join her. And one day during the voyage, the ship's captain informed Spafford that he estimated that they were at the location of the tragic shipwreck. Now, I can't imagine how sorrowful that must have been. After taking it in, Spafford went to his cabin and composed his famous stanza. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like seas billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. How did it happen that Spafford, on that high, blustery ocean, buffeted within by unbelievable grief, was able to say, it is well, it is well with my soul? The answer would be of great help to you and me. We too are tossed about on the seas of life. Finances, health, relationships, loss of th people and things that are dear to us. What howls on the outside churns our emotions on the inside. Fear, anger, grief, worry, disappointment. There's not one of us who doesn't know these emotions and know them well. Philosophers have observed that it's not the storms outside that bother us as much as the way we respond to them within. We're not only behind, as we talked about last week. We're behind, and we're often buffeted. Advent means coming. One of the comings we think about in Advent is the day when God will take us to heaven. That day is why we look forward with hope. Last week we talked about our first location. We're following our Savior to heavenly glory. We're behind, but we're filled with hope. In Advent we also remember that God comes to us through His Word and sacraments. That coming locates us on faith. Behind, but with hope, buffeted but on faith. On faith might sound a bit strange. I'll tell you why I'm saying it that way. You probably know that we're living in a very spiritual time. Spiritual is a popular word, and Americans believe in all kinds of spiritual stuff. Some of it is, at least to my way of thinking, just bitter nonsense. Well, all of this spirituality around us is subjective. 
Most people don't believe that there is such a thing as an absolute truth, objective truth, truths that are sure and certain. It's all subjective. When many people talk about faith, they're thinking about what's subjective, warm, fuzzy feeling within. But what good will that do when, when, if it's proven on Judgment Day to be false? That's why you need to know another meaning of the word faith. The word faith also refers to the objective truths that the Bible teaches. The truths of God. The truth God gave to the prophets, the evangelists, the apostles. The truths of the Bible. This is the faith. This faith is centered in Jesus Christ. As John proclaimed near the end of his Gospel, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of His disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. Paul says, I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Yes, we Bible-believing Christians, Christ-confessing Christians, do have warm, fuzzy feelings in us about God and Jesus. And we'll have those warm, fuzzy feelings on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. While we can properly call that faith, the most important meaning of faith is biblical truths centered in Jesus Christ. So back to Horatio Spafford and back to us. How can we be buffeted by all sorts of emotions and still say, it is well, it is well in my soul? We can when we're located on faith, standing on the teaching of the Word of God. In our text tonight, St. Paul said, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. To hope in Jesus Christ on our way to glory, we have to be located on what's written in Scripture. 500 pastors were surveyed some years ago. And the pastors were asked, what do you feel is the major, region, major reason Christians don't read the Bible? And the pastors responded, and they thought that 47% of their members lacked time or were too busy. 19% lacked the discipline. 15% thought it was irrelevant. 8% considered the Bible reading to not be a priority. 3% couldn't understand what they were reading. And 3% had poor reading skills. Do you fit into one of those categories? Be honest. With everything swirling within and without, does it make any sense not to locate yourselves every week through worship and Bible study and daily Bible reading and devotion on the objective truths of faith? How else can you imagine that it will be all well with your soul? Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have hope. Location, location, location. Faith, the objective Word of God. Hope, our anticipation of glory. Faith, hope. Guess what's next? Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.